Hello and welcome to Chili's vlog number nine. It may look as if I'm filming this in the middle of winter. It's actually the beginning of May. Uh, the weather is absolutely freezing. Unsurprisingly, I haven't caught any carp on this session. Uh, the last time we met, uh, I was fishing with Harry down at Willow Park, which was uh, a wonderful experience for me. Um, not only was I catching carp and spending time in great company, uh, I, I was teaching myself things, things that I needed to uh, learn a little bit more about and, and get confidence in using, uh, and I'm talking in the main about Ziggs. <clears throat> I still wasn't well. Um, the, the fiasco at Christmas at Frimley Park Hospital was still, uh, was still affecting me massively, uh, and it still is to this day. I'll try not to talk about it too much, but uh, obviously it's part of my life and it affects my fishing uh, to a great extent. Uh, I wanted to get back to Willow as quickly as I could. I wanted uh, to do some more Zeke fishing. As soon as I could the following week, I set off for the arduous drive of about a mile and a half over to Willow. Um, it, it's great to have it on my doorstep and uh, I've said it before, I'll say it again, uh, I thank Mark and everybody at Willow for their support in, in my recovery and, and all the help that they've given me. The amazing thing was all I could think about was catching carp on as many different colours uh, as possible. Um, I knew it was about seven foot out there so I, I fished all the zigs in, in mid-water. And Willow, uh, when it really didn't disappoint again, it fished incredibly well. Uh, I, I caught a stack of fish. <laughs> the irony of, of having a good session for me is the fact that it made me so tired. Uh, but I eventually ended up with seven fish, uh, all off the bottom. Uh, maybe I'd have caught more on zigs. I don't know, but they certainly got a good feed out of it. And. Uh, Wonderful for me that I could, after all the problems I've had with my brain uh, or what's left of it, that it was still working properly and I, and I could still catch some carp. The biggest thing for me was probably getting back to my Essex Syndicate. Um, I, there was nothing that I wanted more. Uh, the, the lake was starting to mean so much to me in so many ways. Carrying on the campaign that had started uh, the September before. Uh, <clears throat> it was so exciting and, and as much as I am 58 years old, uh, the night before I left it, it was difficult for me to sleep. I was so excited about going back. Again probably because I thought I never would get back but, uh, but I did and uh, when I turned up at the lake, it was a frosty old day, but the birds were singing. It was really the start of spring, late March. And uh, I just walked around the lake for, for ages and ages. And uh, I didn't see a single thing until I got back to my van uh, and a fish leapt out in one of the car park swims. Um, it, it didn't look like it was a feeding fish. I never think fish that come booming out the water, uh, you know, out past the tail and splashing down, or ones that come out the water three or four times. I never believe that they're feeding fish. I always think they're traveling fish, but uh, the ones that hit the shoulder are the ones that interest me because they're up cleaning their gills after being feeding uh, in the silt and in the diatrus on the bottom of the lake. So I set myself up in one of those car park swims, set up my bivvy, <clears throat> sorted everything out and about an hour later I had a feel around, found myself a couple of spots and baited them with my spot as per usual. Uh, it was 
<clears throat> it, you know, it was just an absolute joy to be here. I've, I've said it before and again, I'll, I'll say it again. Sometimes <clears throat> it's it's about being there just as much as catching the fish. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> I was there and, and I was happy. I didn't really uh, expect to, to catch a fish. But the following morning, about half past six, one of those rods had me uh, scrambling out of my bed um, and, and I started to play a carp and um, normally all I ever think about is playing the fish. It, it, it's, it's one of those moments in life where everything else goes out the window. You don't think about anything else. There can be the worst things happening in the world or to you or whatever and it just seems that the moment you pick up that rod everything else is forgot this occasion was just that uh, all the all the problems i'd had the the, the get in there the the the, the things uh, and there are multiple things going wrong in my in my head as we speak but um it all went out the window and this fish fought like an absolute animal. I, I, I didn't think it was a big one from the get-go. Uh, and, and I say big because the, you know, they go up to upper forties in this lake. Um, but but it, it, it just wouldn't give up. And eventually uh, I got a very neat and tidy 23 pound mirror into my net and I can describe how happy I, I, I was about that. And it was a great start to what I was convinced um, would be another great campaign down in Essex. Unfortunately, uh, the lake had, had shut up shop. It was, it was so difficult for, for any of the members of the syndicate to, to be getting a bite. And uh, yeah, as much as I tried, uh, I moved three times, you know, skidded around the place as much as I could, kept my eyes on the water. I saw nothing and, and, and caught nothing. The next time I rolled up, it was a couple of weeks later. <laughs> it's like a comfy pair of slippers, this place. It, it's, uh, you just, I just slip those slippers on it and, and I'm happy. Uh, and I wanted to get back. There's still so many carp in here. I, I, I want to catch. It's, uh, it really is such a, such a special place. Uh, <clears throat> I drove myself up. And, and again, I ended up on my favourite uh, swim on the lake, which is the point. But it's been so kind to me in the past. And uh, although I had no idea, of course, that uh, that other wheel was going to come off my wagon shortly, uh, I set myself up in here as I normally do. I know the areas I'm going to fish, which means I can do it with a minimum of disturbance. Uh, everything's in catapult range, so once the updates are, are, are set, it, it's five or six pouchfuls of 10 mil hybrid uh, and five or six pouchfuls of the 18 mil version, uh, the 15 mil version of it, uh, and that's how I set those traps. And uh, the following morning, about quarter to six, I was um, sat on the edge of my bed, bed chair, supping a cup of tea. Um, blaming the carp for all my problems when uh, one of the rods just absolutely rattled off <clears throat> and uh, whilst it wasn't the most spectacular fight in the world the fish itself was and it has the, the, the most amazing story and uh, I suppose it's the the ultimate proof that the work and uh, well, just just the hard graft the the two guys that run this lake have put into it uh, to make the most perfect environment for a fish. I think this shows it. Uh, it was stocked in here three years ago at six pound and fourteen ounces, and uh, to be honest with you, the photograph makes it look like a like a dried old sprat on the dockside. It was so malnourished, and uh, it was put in here. 
Anyway, it just went on the missing list. Uh, and there it was on my unhooking mat at £27. You know, when you're carp fishing and knowing the story of the fish you're fishing for, you know, if that didn't make you smile, then uh, again, you might as well be playing tiddlywinks. It was uh, yeah, an incredible fishing and, and, and livened up my day. It wasn't until the following day uh, at the same time uh, that I had another bite. <clears throat> and this one did fight. But again, it didn't feel like a monster. There's none of that plowing it around. It just zipped around, stripping line off the reel and going absolutely mad. And um, <clears throat> eventually I got it in the net and it was a, a, a 24 pound common. Um, I had no idea at that time uh, the significance of that fish and how sad <clears throat> my reflection of its capture would be but uh, <clears throat> I did some photographs and some footage and uh, returned it sat down with a cup of tea and I was probably on my second cup of tea when my phone rang and uh, it was my mum who <clears throat> obviously very tearfully informed me that my father had died um, <clears throat> It was, uh, yeah, probably one of the, <clears throat> the most difficult things. Well, it's the most difficult thing. You've only got two parents. And, um, yeah, it, it was a shocker and brought me uh, back down to earth. <clears throat> um, I will always look at that fish. Uh, and it will always remind me of him. Um, it, you know, it, it, it's <clears throat> something that, that carp fishing will, will help me do for him. Um, you know, the old man, uh, <clears throat> six weeks after I'd been operated on, uh, back into August 2017, um, he was taken into a home uh, with a very rare form of dementia. And I suppose his death was such a surprise because physically he was such a strong man, but uh, I think eventually time uh, took its toll on him and um, he passed away with my mother holding his hand. <clears throat> I reeled the rods in straight away uh, and headed back to Aldershot. I had to inform my mum that I couldn't get down there for a day or two because I needed a rest. It's a hell of a long journey down to Plymouth and uh, I didn't know straight away that I was capable of it. She didn't want me to make the attempt. <coughs> but eventually, <coughs> excuse me, Lynn and I got ourselves down there. It was, um, it was great to be there to comfort my mum. Uh, and obviously there, there was the funeral to sort out and uh, a whole host of other things. My mum, uh, being the most elegant woman in the world, it's difficult for her. She uh, spends her life in a wheelchair now, 87 years old. And uh, yeah, I have to give her as much help as I possibly can, which is incredibly difficult given the situation and the miles that are between us. Uh, I had to come home three days later because Lynn obviously has a whole host of medical things that she needs to take care of but as soon as that was taken care of we got back down and my father had a the, the funeral the service that he would have wanted and uh, amazingly you think uh, families you know my father was 88 years old uh, you can imagine how old the people were, uh, you know, his um, his sister, and all the, me uh, the the members of my mother's family. They're all they're all a lot older. It was difficult for them to get there, but loads of them did. Um, I saw loads of cousins I haven't seen for years, and uh, yeah, it was it was it was oh for all the wrong reasons. Uh, uh, um, wonderful to see all the family supporting my mum in, in such a way and <clears throat> as soon as I was back home it, it's amazing all I wanted to do was was go fishing Fox had hired Old Mill Lake up in Lincolnshire 
uh, for a few days. So all of the Fox consultants. Now I traveled up the day before and uh, simply because <clears throat> all the other guys were gonna eat, uh, we're gonna meet early the next morning and I could have never safely driven uh, through the night at that time. So uh, my intention was to get there, just to put my bed chair up uh, and go to sleep and meet up with the guys in the morning at a cafe up the road. But like any angler, you can't resist a little look around the lake you're gonna fish. And uh, I walked out onto a long point and when I got to the end of it, I looked to the right and uh, I could see a guy was, was fishing over there. So uh, I thought, as politely as I could, I would trot around there and uh, see what he was up to. And uh, as I arrived in his swim, he was playing a car. Uh, I'd never met him before. And um, the irony of, of it, it, it was not lost on me, but um, eventually I found out his name was Phil Saint. Uh, and he is supported in his fishing uh, by Fox International. And um, yeah, to see him playing this fish w was, was amazing. And uh, he asked if I'd do the honor of uh, netting his fish for him. So uh, I got the net in the water and sunk it down. I could see where the line obviously is hitting the surface, just keeping my eye on that. And uh, all of a sudden, in the blink of an eye, this absolute monster <laughs> came to the surface. Just an enormous set of shoulders. and. Uh, Thankfully, it didn't take much effort for me to, uh, to sort of raise the net around it. And uh, we both looked into the net and it, he was at it. Well, I, I don't know who was amazed in, 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 in more, him or me. It, it was an incredible fish. Uh, we got it out of the water, uh, onto the mats, zero scales and everything. It's 51 and a half pounds. So after netting the fish for him and uh, doing all the photographs, uh, Phil informed me that it, it was a personal best. And uh, yeah, what an incredible fish. Uh, what an incredible lake. I, I mean, for me to turn up and see one of, one of the biggest fish in there getting caught, uh, boded well for, for, for the next few days. But, you know, Sean McSpadden was there, Scott Day, guys that... In a, in a lot of respects, I don't mean this in a, you know, to, to sound funny, but it, you know they drive a desk, creating product that that, that are real world beating, that are fantastic, and uh, you know they're the answer to everybody's problems. It was just great to spend some social time with them. Uh, I just don't get time to sit down in a guest chair, having a cup of tea with them, sat in a bivy with their rods out. They get so little time to go fishing. Uh, Lewis Porter, Harry Charrington was there and uh, Harry uh, is a remarkable young man. Um, he caught some incredible fish during that session on, on very, very limited time. Remember Harry's running around the lake filming everybody, filming all the fish that were getting caught. Um, it, it, it was incredible. So it's a well done Harry, Sean McSpadden. Uh, he fished around the corner from uh, from No Cart Bay, where I seem to have set myself up and caught absolutely nothing. Uh, <clears throat> it it uh, yeah, it was incredible to to see everybody enjoying themselves. <clears throat> and then there's the machine, Tom Maker. I mean, I've I've known Tom uh, for for donkey's years. Uh, many many moons ago, he uh, he helped me move some gear from a swim on Chillum Mill. I think he was about 12 years old then, and it's wonderful to see how Tom has developed in, into such uh, such a, an awesome carp catching man. Um, yeah, it was great. His dad was there as well, so it, it made the party complete for me. <clears throat> um, yeah, as I say, I caught absolutely nothing, but um, somebody once wrote, many, many years ago. Tis the company, not the cart, that maketh the feast. And uh, it could not have been truer in those circumstances. Um, yeah, in 18 years, it's never happened. And uh, I hope that it doesn't take us 18 years to do it again.